Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome again to another City of South Pasadena Public Works meeting. Should this button be on or do we have a reverb here? I'm not sure what it is. All right, we still have an echo effect or should we be fine? We're good now. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the City of South Pasadena Public Works Department Commissioner meeting. It is May 11th at 6.30 p.m. And we're gonna start off with the South Pasadena Works Commission Statement of Civility. As your elected governing board, we will treat each other, members of the public and city employees with patience, civility, and courtesy as a model of the same behavior we wish to reflect in South Pasadena for the conduct of all city business and community participation. The decision made tonight will be for the city of South Pasadena community and not for personal gain. Notice the public participation and accessibility pursuant to section three of the executive order N0821 issued by Governor Newsom, a special meeting of the Public Works Commission May 11th, 2022 will be in person and held in video conference and in person virtual hybrid meetings will maintain transparency and public access while protecting the health and safety of the public. Members of the public have the option to participate in person or via Zoom using the following link below. Uh, public comments and suggestions. Uh, the Public Works Commission welcomes, welcomes public input. If you would like to comment on this agenda item, members of the public may participate by means of one of the following options. Option one, participants, will be able to raise their hand using Zoom icon during the meeting and they will have the microphone unmuted during the comment portion of the agenda. Option two, email public comments, which is typically what we have been doing. Public comments received in writing will not be read out loud in the meeting, but will be part of the meeting record. Written public comments will be uploaded online for public viewing under additional documents. There's no word limit on the email public comments. Please make sure to indicate your name optional and what agenda items you are submitting public comments on. Submit no later by 12 p.m. on Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Um, so we're gonna do a call to order. Uh, I'll hand it off to you, Raina. Hello, good evening. Chair David Malley. Present. Vice Chair uh, Frank Catania. Here. Commissioner Sam Hernandez. Present. Commissioner Charles Trevino is absent for this meeting. City Council Liaison, Evelyn Snymer. Here. Staff Liaison, Public Works Director, Ted Gerber. Acting Public Works Deputy Director, Antana Tespe. And myself, Public Works Management Assistant, Raina Salazar-Martin. Thank you. Great, and now we'll do our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. With that said, uh, any public comments, Rena? No public comments for tonight. Great, and we have a presentation, Rena. Uh, yes. Hello, Ted. Hi, good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, welcome back, welcome back to in person. I think this is our first one for a while here. Sure. Um, so tonight we wanted to give you an overview. Um, is, there any, is there any way to zoom in a little bit on that? Uh, not sure, that's okay if, if not. Um, tonight we wanted to give you an overview of our capital improvement program. Um, so a little bit of background on this. Um, the city is required to adopt a capital improvement program that is aligned with our general plan. And the way that South Pasadena goes about this, um, well, first off, I should back up one step. A capital improvement program is, is basically looking at our, um, our you know, mid to long-term uh, project schedule for uh, infrastructure improvements within the city. And so the city is required to uh, develop a program like this, and it should be built in accordance with our general plan. 
And the way that the city uh, adopts our capital improvement program is that we actually uh, integrate year one of the five years into our annual budget that is adopted in June. And then years uh, two through five uh, sort of work as an information, like an informative um, projection forward of what other types of projects and what our potential uh, ex capital expenditures will be moving forward um, so that we can appropriately plan for those as we, as we move through the year. So um, the document that you see before you here is, is three pages. Uh, it looks a little bit different when it gets captured into the annual budget, um, but you have uh, eight columns in front of you in this plan. So let me walk you through what you're looking at here. Um, the, well, there's more than eight columns. There's eight financial columns, and there's a couple other columns of descriptors. So on the very left-hand side, you see our account number. Um, and if there's an account number established there, it means we've already set up this um, expected budget in our accounting system. And if you see a TBD there to be determined, it's because it's a project that's coming in a few years from now. And we haven't yet set up a, an accounting number and there's no need to because there's, not, there's no action to be taken this year. Um, and then you'll see the name and title of the capital improvement project. And we'll walk through these so we can talk about what they are. Um, and then that first numeric column you'll see is, our, is the appropriated amount for that project in this current fiscal year, 21-22. So that's money that's already been budgeted. And in some cases, some of it's been spent in this current fiscal year. The next column to that, you'll see it says carryover from 21-22. Um, and what that means is any monies that were not spent in 21-22 that have already been budgeted and approved by council, um, we can carry them over to 21, to tw we can carry the over to 22-23. We don't show them in the 22-23 uh, column because we want to keep that um, separate for our understanding to see what money we didn't spend last year that we need to bring into this year. And then what money is new money budgeted freshly and newly in 22-23? And that's what you see in the third column is our proposed capital improvement budget for 22-23. So if you were to crack open our annual budget, which is, uh, will soon be posted on our website because it's gonna be coming to um, council on June 1st, you would see um, column three, but in a lot more detail. It would break down each of those projects and show you where the funding is coming from, whether it was a you know, from the general fund or from a, a local fund or some sort of grant funding. Um, but that's the one that we are most concerned with about adopting for the year. Um, and then the columns following that, uh, proposed 23, 24, 24, 25, and so on, are what we are forecasting uh, our expenditures to be moving forward. And that's really just to plan ahead. Um, we don't fully understand what our fund balances are gonna be like that at that time. But during this current year, we'll start to figure out what's happening for three, four, and then, and then so on. And then at the very last column, you could see it's a, it's a total. It's a, so it's a total for the project and then it's a total for um, the category. And we've sort of color coded the categories. You'll see them as we go through the different pages. Um, just to give an idea of like what we're spending. For example, the bottom area that's sort of that um, orangey color is the library. And so you could see what our, our uh, near-term expenditures are expected for capital improvements in the library and then long-term, and then you can see a, a total there. And so that's how that works. Um, so again, the idea here is that um, we focus on the 22-23 and we, we've already uh, aligned those numbers with our operating budget to make sure that our entire budget balances so for example, um, you know, our, our water revenue and our water savings uh, aligned with our operations budget, what we have to pay annually to keep our water being uh, produced and distributed, um, we wanna balance that along with what our capital expect, ex expenditures are for water so that everything balances out at the end of the day. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, you know, balancing a budget and and just making sure your revenue in matches your expenditures out. Um, and in some cases you want a bit of a surplus for contingency and things like that. Um, 
So with that said, I'm gonna uh, just uh, quickly over go over the groups and then we can go back and look at the project. So the groups on this page is, um, we've got our general building and facilities. So these are like all of the 12 um, buildings that the city owns and operates, including you know the building you're in right now, City Hall, the Civic Center, um, the War Memorial, uh, the seniors, well, the senior center is kind of tied into library sometimes, but the senior center is included in that list. Um, and then some of our other uh, um, infrastructure, like we have our mission yard facility um, and things like that. Um, as far as uh, parks facilities go, they, they're in a different category. So like restroom structures and um, the Eddie Park House and things like that, those are in a different category you'll see on a later page. Um, the second category on the page is, is primarily community development. And those are, uh, most of community development's budget is an operating budget, but in some cases they need these large expenditures um, for uh, software purchases and implementation. And so you see here, uh, we'll get into the details of what those projects are, but that's what you're seeing here, that these are community development focused uh, improvements. Uh, then we have information technology, same type of thing, whether it's a software or hardware infrastructure, improvement that we have in the city. And then lastly, as I mentioned, uh, the library. And again, we'll come back to these pages with the actual projects, but Raina, do you mind going to the second page? Thank you. Uh, so on the second page of three here, you'll see our, our long list of community services and parks, and that's mostly attributed to the many different types of parks facilities and recreation facilities that we have and the improvements that we're making to those over time. Um, the next one down in blue, you have uh, public safety police, and these are um, improvements very specific to the police facility right across the way from us here. Um, same goes for fire in the red. And then um, sewer in yellow, and that looks like a very short list, um, but we'll get into why that's organized that way when we get to the, the detail here. And then the third page, thank you, Raina. Um, we've organized it into our stormwater projects. These are mostly for our um, municipal uh, separate stormwater systems, our MS4 compliance systems. Our street projects, um, again, it's sort of narrowed in a, in a summary list, and we'll talk about that in, in a moment. Sustainability projects. So here's where we have uh, work that we're tackling in our climate action plan and then some of our electric vehicle implementation. Um, transportation and traffic projects, which is a big area here, and we'll go and talk about what those projects are there. And then finally, our um, water infrastructure projects, uh, which will be a particular interest in this um, commission because we recently went through our uh, One Water Master Plan um, some time ago. Just a quick question. The upper right-hand corner where the total for the five-year, the 266, is that just for this page? Um, no, I think that's for all three pages. All, okay. Yeah. But again, um, I'll emphasize that that's sort of like a, a planning tool. We don't think we'll be able to spend 266. We're just basically trying to capture everything and figure out what their costs are. Um, but it depends on grant funding, a lot of factors. So um, so let's, uh, let's jump back to uh, the first page right now, if you don't mind. Okay, so, so digging into our uh, facilities category here. Um, so a lot of what goes into deciding what to put into the 22, 23 column, that third column that we adopt in this year budget is what are, what are our staff resource allocation? Like what can we actually accomplish? So you'll see that the, um, the following years are, are a lot more, are increased because we're trying to park stuff in, into where we think it might land in the future. But really what we're committing to in that third column is what we're actually gonna be able to accomplish with our staff here. So with regard to facilities, there's a lot of work to do. Um, we, uh, in, a, in a prior assessment of our facility infrastructure in 2017, it found that there was uh, uh, you know, up, to, up to around $3 million worth of infrastructure improvements to do at the city facilities. And that was in, in 2017 dollars. So what we're going to try to do this year is, is bite off a, a chunk of that uh, and do a, a facility uh, functionality, security, and, and use and condition and use assessment. And so we want to start that this year. 
So we've set aside some money to initialize that assessment and then also conduct some repairs under that, you know, um, based on what we, we find um, from that. that. So those are the, that's the large items under the facility category. Um, yes. Um, I noticed that um, on the mission yard, um, 92, the general account 9206, there is nothing on the 2022-23. I thought that the security gates will be in that column. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And that's a really good example of this sort of carryover uh, that we'll have that will be um, we'll have to explain to council as well. Is that so we we already budgeted 160,000 in this current fiscal year. And we fully intend to have a purchase order in place um, to uh, to start installing those gates probably before the end of the fiscal year, but the work will likely sort of bleed into next year as well. So the way that South Pasadena handles this accounting wise is that we say we are going to carry over the 160,000 from the previous year because it was already adopted. It's already been pulled out of whatever fund we used for it, um, and we don't want to duplicate um, demonstrate it, it costing the city more money in 22-23. So even though you're right, the work will occur in 22-23, that's why it's so important to show both of these co columns and contexts to just show that we're gonna, we're gonna carry that 160,000 over, use it this year um, and not add more money to it. So you can see a different scenario right there with the um, citywide facilities assessment 9404. In that case, we already committed $100,000 last year. We want to add another hundred thousand this year. So, um, if you see on the far right column, it's a two hundred thousand dollar total for um, nine four hundred four, which can be a little confusing because you see three columns of a hundred thousand. But again, it's because we appropriated one, we're carrying it over, which is the same money, and then we're adding. But for the mission yard security gates, you only see one hundred sixty thousand in the in the total column because we're only going to spend one hundred sixty thousand on that project. But thank you for mentioning that because um, that's a, that's a concept that uh, is specific to how we budget, uh, how we demonstrate that in the budget. And Evelyn, how how were you aware of the hundred sixty that wasn't carried over? Oh, or, do you see something I don't see? Um, not really. It's just that it's kind of odd that uh, twenty twenty three is next year. It, yeah, because we're already one half of. 2022, but then I anticipate there's going to be an increase in materials and labor. Yeah. So um, that's a really good point. I'm glad you mentioned too. What you're looking at here right now is 2022 dollars. So the 160 um, will be spent this year in 2022. We're fairly confident that that will, you know, based on the quotes we receive, that's what it will cost. But that's not to say that in 26, 27. Um, the costs may be accurate because we haven't considered inflation for the next five years. Uh, again, because we're really just looking at an informational view to capture all the projects and give the commissions and the council the general idea of what the infrastructure needs are in the city. We're not going to adopt this um, years two through five as the plan. Those will happen. That'll happen next year. What we're adopting as the plan is 22-23 or what we've already adopted in 21-22. So Sam, to answer your question, um, if you look at uh, the fifth row down, 9206, uh, 825 Mission Yard security gates, you'll see that the council already voted, gave us $160,000. We're going to carry it over to the next year. And so what um, council members Nimer was mentioning is she didn't, she saw a blank spot in proposed 2223 and was basically saying, you know, why don't you have any money planned for this year? You're gonna need it. And the answer is because we already have it planned from last year. Sure. Um, and so the last one to round that out is uh, some HVAC repairs. We have HVAC repairs to make throughout the city, but we basically have to take, you know, bite off what we can chew in a year. And so we've identified the um, War Memorial and the library as, as sort of the um, priority areas to address HVAC issues. City Hall was addressed uh, recently under a large project. Um, and so these are, you know, 
utilize facilities that we want to focus on for this coming year? Question, Ted? Of um, course. In 2022, the citywide facilities repairs, you have 150,000. That would that include the parking lot of uh, War Memorial? The reason I'm asking is when it rained um, last year, when we were decorating the float, it was actually flooded and there were like mud. It would seep from that um, west, what, northwest side and it like went through where the float was. And so we were wearing rain boots because of the mud silt, just like. Yeah, pretty down. gross. <laughs> Um, I'm, you know, these are great questions. I'm really glad you're asking because this really uh, demonstrates a lot of things we want to make the commission and the council understand is that, so for example, um, and you'll see this at a couple of spots in the plan, um, we, for, for water and sewer and things like that, we've done our master planning work. We have done this 30 year plan. We know where the money needs to go next, but for things like facilities, we don't have that uh, master plan look at like, what's the priority projects that are coming up first. And so that's why we've um, uh, put a broad sort of amount here in a label so that when we start that assessment this year, we can take comments like yours and put them into our consideration to see, okay, where, where are all the issues? Um, where do we wanna spend resources? And so that's why we, can't, we put this number, just a, a, the reason the number is so small is because we have to make the rest of the budget balance. Um, so we don't know exactly what they'll be spent on, but as we identify the priorities in facilities, just like we've identified the priorities in water, for example, we can start to direct money there. And you'll see that that money grows and grows and grows over the coming years because we expect at least a $3 million liability in terms of facility improvements. So for that specific improvement, when we look at it, we can see if that's appropriate for facility money, might even be appropriate for um, might even be appropriate for stormwater improvement money, because if that silt is causing, you know, is making it into the storm drain and, and causing pollution for, for our MS4 compliance, that would be an appropriate place to spend that type of money to, to fix that problem. So that's, that's a great comment. Of course. So uh, moving on to the community development section, um, these are software applications that, uh, community development needs to procure. Um, the, the permit management software, we actually expect to be um, more than this. And there might be actually an error on here. We, we expect it to be several hundred thousand dollars, but we were uh, planning to spend 150 in the first year. So we actually have to add that in there uh, for more additional years. Um, and then the number we have in mind for their digital records and scanning, again, the same thing. We want to dedicate you know, a certain amount of money in one year to start digitizing a lot of the community development records that they have. Um, some of these projects, when we actually go to council uh, and there's specific questions on them, we'll have the other directors available to answer like the real specific uh, you know, details of their particular project. We're sort of brought everything together and balance the budget and, and that kind of thing. Um, similarly, for information technology, we have a project to go over um, VOIP, uh, voice net, internet protocol, um, and then there's other software systems that we'd like to implement uh, out of the city manager's office, customer care system, agenda management system. Um, and then the library, I won't go through each specific project, but you can see there's a lot of repairs that we have intended for the library. Um, again, when we do like a facility-wide assessment, um, that'll take into account all of the, you know, broadly speaking, like all the projects for the library, but these are the ones that we are aware of based on our 2017 study and, and what's the priority. Uh, Ted, I'm looking at the um, line item, uh, library emergency solar uh, backup and storage system is, you know, that's proposed in 2024-25. Is that a viable thing with all the shade and the trees that we have around? Uh, um, just didn't know if that's something that's been looked into because that's a big number. Yeah, it is a big number. So there's a couple of things on that. So um, we'll get to it later in the, in the evaluation, but we have um, 
I don't want to say it's free, but we have a, a, a one facility funded project, the Clean Power Alliance, to build a solar system at a facility. And there was different facilities considered for that. The library was one. But again, like you said, it wasn't really deemed feasible because of the shape of the roof and the yeah. um, trees. We looked at another, our water facility. And where we landed actually was to build it in the mound parking lot out here. And that's what we're currently assessing for feasibility. Um, so to answer your question, it wasn't really deemed feasible. The reason that's still on there is because um, as, the, as the library was doing their planning, uh, some of these big ticket projects they have here, um, there is some state grant money that they uh, were pursuing that would assist them in implementing something like this. So that was what the initial estimate to um, install it was. And what uh, the concern was that um, the energy usage when the library uses, uses a cooling center. And so though our, though our initial assessment for solar deemed it not feasible because the trees and the roof there may be some capacity for solar. And if it is grant funded, there may be a way to install it, maybe closer to the senior center side or something similar. Um, so we didn't, it's still in the works, I guess you could say, it's still in consideration by the library based on grant funding. Uh, that wouldn't, that is almost certainly not a project the city would just fund out of its coffers. If it was grant funded and it was feasible, then it would move forward. So if I'm understanding correctly, this can capital improvement project document that you're showing us is kind of like a wish list that you're hopefully trying to accomplish through potential grant money. When we go to, I think, uh, the third page, there was referencing all the, the Royal Seiko project, which I believe you're hopefully, hopefully a, achieving by paying through all that through grant money. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So that third column is secured. It's, if it's on that third column, 22, 23, the, either the grant money is there or we're spending city money on it. Yeah. Everything else is sort of capturing potential projects. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. So I think you could jump to the next page, Raina. And I won't belabor this by going through every single project. I wanted to give you an idea. We can move a little faster. But um, you can see here there's many needs as far as parks go for improvements. Um, what we're biting off to chew, it's already approved, is the construction of the Gravelia and Berkshire pocket parks. Uh, they're mostly through their, their design, which was what the council already adopted, um, 178,000 in the past year. Um, but, sorry, um, in the past year, uh, and then this coming year, I, I think there's a grant fund um, or either park impact fees. I don't exactly remember for the A25 to actually construct the parks. Um, and then you can see um, we have sort of uh, tentatively scheduled some of our reserve money out of the golf course for additional netting replacement. That doesn't include the netting replacements happening right now under a warranty agreement. This would be in theory like the rest of the driving range netting all the way around the other side. Um, so we think that that's a priority to consider. Um, and then we've also got some smaller projects, War Memorial Sound System and a key system, and then a whole list of improvements that are sort of tucked away for future funding for future years for parks. Sure, so, um, so pocket parks are like these one parcel city owned properties, usually between two other houses or structures that the city owns for, for whatever reason, vacant lots that we turn into a pocket park. So a good example is um, the, the very small parks at the corner of Monterey and Via Del Rey when you enter the Southwest Hills, those are pocket parks. The one at the bottom by Van Horn, that's a pocket park um, by Via Del Rey and Camino Del Ver Del Camino Verde. So there are two properties, one on Gravelia, like along the freeway, and then one on Berkshire, you know, kind of off of Meridian, that they're just these small parcels that the city owns. So we're developing them into just a tiny little park for that neighborhood where there's basically, you know, a little play area with, um, with um, decomposed granite and then like a little sidewalk with some grassy areas for kids to play and stuff like that. And so that's what you see there. Um, so then we go into our public safety support um, these are projects that really improve the, the quality of the, the environment and the public safety um, facilities. Uh, the police there, there's several 
um, improvements for like very old and dated facilities and, and some in disrepair uh, to update their uh, internal operations. Um, and then the fire safety there, we have the uh, front bay apparatus door replacement. That's to make sure that those uh, garage doors are operating smoothly and we can rely on them. There's a contingency there where the fire can actually leave through either side of their facility. You might not have seen it, but they have a way out the back if they need to, but we wanna make sure that those uh, doors operate smoothly. So we have a line item in there that's prioritized. I got a question and I'll back up with the community services and parks. Uh, the grassy area around the library is a park, correct? Yes, yeah. Um, there's an ugly um, bicycle, like it just sprouted, like nobody knew who did that. And it really obscured the frontage of the library where the uh, artwork that was actually presented by um, um, Judy Chu and everybody in the uh, Congress, and uh, they came over to celebrate that. Now it's when you park your bicycle in that steel thing, um, it really obscure it. So I don't know if we could relocate that to the side or how much expense would that gotcha. be? Gotcha, okay. Well, th that's definitely something that we wanna um, incorporate into our list here. The parks is another good area that we, um, as far as the staff knows, we don't have a long-term master plan for parks. We actually built putting together uh, a parks master plan into our budget. Um, we were gonna do it this year, but the funding didn't work out. So we actually have it as the first TBD um, 150,000. So that's something that uh, we would wanna consider into how, where does that fall into our spending priorities and how do we get that in? Um, it's probably a really simple thing to do. And so uh, if we could tag it into a, a, another project that's working in that same area, that would that'd be the best strategy. Thank you. But it's, for some reason, yeah. It, it the whole vision of the yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if the cost and effort is that that doesn't really, you know, rise to the level of a capital improvement project that we need to take a couple of years to plan, and it's something very simple that we can do, um, we've set aside some money in our operations annual budget just to take care of things like that. Um, and that that's come up and they'll probably come up as a question during our council session is, um, you know, we have, you can see money if you look through our annual budget for facility repairs here and some park improvements here and there. And that's really so that we can remain agile and robust for our staff just to have some operations money that we can use to make those type of small improvements instead of having to sort of load them into a long-term capital improvement project. Mm -hmm. Should be straightforward. What we're referring to is there is a type of act that includes steel. Like out of place with the so, character. Yeah. The concept is good. Yes. It's a great idea. And I think it's fun to uh, bring in. So rounding out this page, the last item you'll see is sewer. So uh, if you recall from our one water master plan, we found that there is a basically a, like a 30 million, I'm sorry, a $15 million liability in sewer repair over 30 years. So that's just as simple as this. We basically took 30 years divided by the 15 million. And, and so our requirement is to spend 500,000 a year. So we know which sewers need to be replaced, but what we wanna do to um, be strategic in our spending is to coordinate street repair with sewer repair, with water repair, and then any other utilities that need to jump in on that as far as Edison and AT&T go or the gas company to um, you know, reduce the cost of those improvements. And so we have yet to do that evaluation to see exactly which sewers and uh, um, get repaired. For streets, we have a, a program that's somewhat in place. We're a little behind and we'll get to that in a moment, but that's why you see it as just sort of a lump sum as we figure out which projects move forward first, 
then we, we split them out in the capital improvement plan as specific projects. But right now it's sort of just showing the money. Um, there's a developer component. It depends on um, exactly. Yeah, it depends on the condition, the capacity. So like, you know, a, a project we've been dealing with recently, we found that um, their domestic water supply pressure velocity is fine. But it there if they were to have a fire, it's not fine. They actually need additional capacity. So they will cover the cost of um, those fire flow improvements if they have to add a hydrant but we run it through our hydraulic model and we run it through our system standards that um, it follows what we were gonna do for, what we, what we need to do for future improvements anyway. So it all kind of comes together um, so that the developer in that circumstance is covering the cost of the um, improvement, but it still follows our master planning effort. Um, so it's all coordinated. It would. Um, streets and sidewalks are an interesting um, concept that we don't necessarily have like a master plan in place like we have, like we've built for these other utilities, but we have a pavement condition index plan of what the condition is. So there's still some more work to do in us understanding like what of our long term plans for street and sidewalk repair. We know what's prioritized based on the deterioration, but hasn't considered like where developments will come up. So for example, a strategic way to handle this would be the city's not gonna go jump out and start to make street improvements right in front of where a developer is gonna come in in a couple of years because that's something that can be easily funded by the developer. So those are the types of um, strategic planning efforts that we still have to make in those areas. Okay, on to the last page. So I'm not keeping you here all night here. So um, these are ones you're much more familiar with. These are a lot of our utility and our transportation projects. So we've got our stormwater projects here, which we've talked about a lot in this commission. Um, and these are hopefully mostly um, grant funded, either through Measure W or we're pursuing maybe Prop 1 funds. And we've already received Prop 68 funds in this. We might receive some metropolitan funds. Um, but this basically shows the cascading projects that we've talked about along the Arroyo, um, the Huntington Drive Green Street project, um, some improvements that pocket park that we were talking about that actually is located along a, a storm drain. Um, so that, that sort of explains our, our stormwater uh, setup there. Um, and that the money you see allocated for this year, uh, that 1.2 million is our approximate spending on our Pasadena joint project, that's paid for. That is coming from Measure W and Prop 68. So we're not actually spending city funds other than you know our staff time and things like that that's somewhat reimbursable under the grant. Yeah, so in the in the actual budget, if you look at the adopted 2223, you'll see a breakdown of all the fund the spending by grant. But here it's all just listed um, together exactly. So yeah, our our spending for capital improvement projects out of the general fund this year is less than two million dollars. That's what we're planning. Um, but then we have up to you know, you know, up to six, seven million in other types of grant funding that's that's expected. Um, and so that brings us to street repairs. So street repairs is an interesting situation because um, cities behind in terms of uh, repairs. I think that's not something that's we're, that's a big surprise for all of us here. But um, when I mean we're behind, I don't mean just we're behind in condition. We're actually behind in um, implementing the already uh, set out plan for improvements. So when I, what I'm saying is that um, each year the city establishes which streets they're going to improve. And at the moment, we're designing the streets that were designated in 2019-2020. So we actually haven't spent a lot of street repair money over the last few years. And so that's why you see here 
it's about a, I think it's like 2.3, it might be closer to 2.5 once we get the numbers down of carryover money that is, we've set aside, is, is dedicated for streets, but we haven't used. And so um, we're adding a, about another million, a little over that um, in grant funding um, to, you know, basically make that pot bigger. But even that's a big ask. The city usually doesn't, hasn't spent more than a million dollars in street repairs in the past couple of years. Um, and so we're basically trying to accelerate the street repair program in that respect. Um, but we really have to sit down. We've got a lot to figure out here in terms of how, how we do that with our staff resources. But that's something that we'll be talking here with the Public Works Commission uh, in the coming months. Um, but yeah, th that's what you're seeing there. So there are specific streets that have been designated. And once we get that sorted out with this sort of overall approach we're talking about, that will also break down into specific projects. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have that list. We have our pavement condition of what was expected to do every year, um, but we want to take another strategic look at that to see how do we chop this up? How can we accelerate it? Um, and, and so that's what we're in the process of doing now. We, uh, we were spending time on getting our water and our sewer and our stormwater plans straightened out so they're on a, on a funding schedule. Um, and now we, our, next, our next phase is looking at our streets in that same way. With the listing of the street projects, are you um, buying a new software to improve from last year's horrible? Um, um, so we, we, it's a good question. Um, what I missed on the first slide was that we have this uh, um, CMS system, this computerized maintenance management system that we hope to use. It's at the very top. It's already budgeted um, to use for a lot of our utility infrastructure. The initial scope of that project is to focus on water and sewer assets infrastructure. We have a separate GIS, um, sort of a mini pavement management system um, that's not like a full-fledged software. It's kind of just a way to hold on to the data. And we hope to roll that into the future into the CMS system. So it's one comprehensive system, but it's, you know, we have multiple steps before we, we get there for a, a street software systems. So the answer is no in the immediacy, but the plan is that we can roll that information into our CMS system in the future. It stands for computerized uh, maintenance management system. And really what it is, is like a, it's like a couple things in one, but it's, it's primarily a tracking system where let's say you have all of your hydrants that are tracked in the system and you can have them on a routine maintenance schedule. You can see how old they are, which ones have been painted recently which ones are broken and need service. And it really lets you manage your assets in a lot more of a streamlined way. Um, and then you can generate metrics and see where your spending is going, where you can, um, you know, it, it helps you uh, as a planning tool. Okay, Randy, do you mind jumping back to the, thank you. Um, so on the sustainability, um, we had set aside a climate action plan money in the past. And so we don't have a, we don't, have, we're not going to add additional climate action money this year because we have yet to spend that. And that's a, the climate action plan has got like a good $2 million worth of projects in it, um, depending on what you do. And so we're just trying to figure out our priorities there. We're going to knock, we're hoping to knock out a lot of those items this year with our EV infrastructure that you see in the rest of the sustainability. Um, the big projects there are actually working to install um, electrical vehicle, electric vehicle charging systems in the city hall lot. Um, and the whole point behind that is so that our police uh, vehicles and our fire administrative vehicles, uh, their sedans and such uh, can go to electric vehicles. And that's in our operating budget uh, for the police to start a new electric vehicle leasing program um, so that they're reducing emissions and actually reducing their maintenance and fuel costs by going electric. And Public Works is, is trying to support that effort by implementing um, EV charging systems. And that knocks off a whole bunch of stuff off of our uh, climate action plan as far as um, uh, you know, uh, emissions goals. Sure. Um, so it's a multi-phase plan. 
Um, we just finished installing one level three, like a uh, fast charger uh, just this week in the lot. We're actually wrapping up right now, which was from a grant fund from last year. And so um, the next phase would be level two chargers, which are basically, um, you know, on the power order of like, if you have an electric oven or a furnace, that's the kind of power that you would need to, to run one of these. So it's not like a fast charger, but it's, it's better than just an, a regular old outlet. Um, and so we would put chargers like that in the um, lots behind City Hall. There's a police lot back there. There's a fire lot back there. And then in the city staff lot that's exposed that the public has access to on the you know, north side of the fire station, we would also add some chargers for public use. So it'd be one large project. Um, most of the costs would be covered by Edison um, because they would install the infrastructure um, and we would basically pay for the chargers. And uh, the agreement is that we would, you know, uh, utilize those chargers for the next 10 years. That's where the savings comes because Edison meets their uh, public utilities commission quota. And, you know, we get the charging infrastructure out of it. Obviously we pay for the electricity. Um, but that's the idea is that the chargers be placed back behind the city hall lot. Yeah, so that's a really good uh, question because when we applied for this program, we actually applied in every facility. We applied for City Hall, we applied for the yard, um, the, that CNG station by the Arroyo. Um, none of those were uh, uh, considered feasible for the amount of cost for Edison because basically they have to get they have to get enough chargers to make it worth their while on a on a per charger basis. So if we're installing, say, you know, 20, 30 chargers in, this, in all those lots behind City Hall, on a cost per charger, it's relatively cheap for Edison. But over in the CNG station, you know, we, we want to install four. I think we went to like eight. Uh, there's only so much room in there. It turned out not to be feasible. Um, the same thing with the yard. There's just a really thick um, concrete slab that would be difficult to trench through. So we couldn't get into that program with Edison. We're pursuing a couple other options, like um, like a freestanding solar uh, charging system that we've been looking at recently, or even getting into one of Edison's other programs, which is the it's called the Charge Ready Transport Program for larger vehicles, which gives us a little bit more of an allowance, a little more freedom. So we did look at all of those options, and we're trying to basically find the opportunities that fit best. Um, so those will be later years. Um, one that uh, Edison, we think they'll accept, though, is in the Arroyo Park uh, by the baseball field. Um, when you park back there, you know, there's the bathrooms over there, and then there's that, um, you drive in, and there's that parking lot. Um, so we think we'll be able to install some chargers in that center section that, you know, eventually when people are purchasing electric vehicles and they're going to baseball games or soccer games, they can use those chargers. So they're in a convenient location. So that, that you'll see that on there as the Arroyo Park EV charging systems. And again, we don't expect that to cost us very much because our only financial responsibility is the chargers, Edison puts in all the other infrastructure. Um, and then to round that out, we have another master plan to talk about how we're gonna address trees over a long period of time in the city because you know, trees are a big issue. Um, we've added more money into our operating budget this year to remove you know, unhealthy trees and replant them, um, but on a full city-wide scale, we want to develop a plan for how we're going to maintain the tree canopy in the city over a long period of time, how much do we have to remove, how much do we have to add, what's the policies with that, so that's that, that master plan effort would be. On the um, maintenance of the tree canopies, um, I don't think we have a um, like a computerized system mapping all the trees and um, um, determining the health of the trees and the age of the trees in the prior years. Um, how would you, I mean, that was one of the biggest problems because we didn't know where to direct our uh, West Coast arbors to. We don't even know what they're doing. Um, and, but 
who are spending half a million dollars to to pay them but we are subject to right right now a couple of potential loss or what what the two potential losses because of the trees falling on their property and damaging properties so how can we incorporate that um, information that was way back in like 10, 15 years ago? So um, there's been some improvements on that. Um, it's not our software system, but West Coast Arborists are contracted tree, you know, trimming, pruning services. They have their own software system that um, have mapped out most of the trees in the city. And so with that, um, they can track the species and I, I think they can track the age. Um, and that's where they uh, will identify unhealthy trees in that system. And that's where we basically build these lists of um, unhealthy trees, but uh, not, I don't think every tree is in that system. And so there's a, there has to be an effort to um, inventory trees. Um, and then there might be, there's situations where the trees are in there, um, but you know, it has to be, we have to be clear on which trees are whose prop, whose responsibility and that type of thing. Um, so there's a lot of work to do in terms of managing that whole effort, but there has been some strides in terms of tracking what's out there. So we're able to, um, we're able to monitor uh, West Coast Arborist work, not just like physically with our staff monitoring what they do, but also through what they're entering into this Arbor Access system. Um, but again, like uh, we basically, whatever we can afford in a given year is what we take care of. Um, I don't think we have a, we don't have a, a long-term plan for like how to keep that up. So, and that's, that's my, that's the point that we're getting at here is that we have this large liability of unhealthy or dead trees in the city that has to be addressed. And basically each year we kind of throw money at whatever we can. Um, but I don't think we have this long-term plan in place about how to address it over time. So that's what we're trying to deal with. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Um, 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 well, the issue then is who possesses that intellectual property that arborists, West Coast arborists have in their computer mapping? Should not, shouldn't that be in the city's uh, property too? Because that's ours, intellectually speaking, and that's a copyright. It's a very, very good question. Um, as far as the software that they own it, it's their system that we have access to. Um, the data, it's a good question. I, I, we would have to look into see like, you know, how that, or the ownership of that data works. It's, it's a very good question. I don't have a good answer for you, but I know as far as the software goes, um, it is, is owned and developed by West Coast Arborists. Um, well, I haven't, looked at the contract that, sure. that should be, uh, I'll call the city attorney because that should be ours. It's, a, it's an interesting question. We should discuss that further. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll make a note that because we, we have yet to talk about more of this uh, from a contractual perspective. Oh, thank so you. thank you for adding that. It's well, a it's a good question. The, the our contract expires shortly, so month. there's opportunity to yeah. revisit this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Really yeah. Um, yes. I mean, I, there, I the contract, so. <laughs> there's an opportunity. You know, as we get this CMS system implemented, that's something that could be housed there. So we have to talk about the logistics, of course, and the rights to that information. But um, yeah, it's a very good point. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, I think we're good. I mean, we'll, we'll jump real quick. These, there's just transportation projects here that you see. We've talked about many of these and then the water projects. Um, the transportation projects, you know, uh, we're already, many of us are already familiar with these. These are along the major corridors that we already have grant funding. And so they're, these projects are, 
are either underway or starting this year. Um, of particular note is these rectangular rapid flashing beacons. These are the three RFDs that are wrapping up design and will be installed next year. And so you can see that's, that's federal money there, that $238,000 to implement those. So that's on our plan. Um, and then we have future plans for transportation. Um, and then as far as water goes, there's a lot of work to do. You know, we've got a 30 year plan. This is just the first five years of it, but our priorities are um, our water main repairs, which again, just like sewer, just like streets, we have a specific list, but we wanna integrate it and be more efficient. Uh, and then we have um, our West side reservoir is our, our, most, our highest uh, priority item as far as infrastructure goes. We are just now, we uh, council just approved our seismic and structural evaluation that is beginning on the West Side Reservoir. And so that study, which should take about um, five to six months, will inform us about alternatives with that. And then we can roll into what our new, our design work would be and then our construction work after that. Um, but yeah, you see some other things on there, but that's in general the, the, the plan. We've, again, we've got our focused work for this coming fiscal year and then our planned work as we you know, compile this, these projects over time. Great. Thank you for uh, your presentation. I think it's of very course. detailed and um, I know it's the wish list. And now how you get the funds, hopefully a lot through the grant money would be uh, very important and valuable. And, um, and then what the city can do financially to support it, obviously it would be taken into consideration and done through the city council. So that's great. Um, any other questions for uh, Ted on this? Yes, um, when the budget gets uh, published very soon here, because it will be up for um, adoption on June 1st, so it should be published in the next you know, week or two. Uh, actually, I, I should have mentioned, there's gonna be a special meeting on May 25th uh, to discuss the budget with the council and then an adoption on June 1st. So when that packet gets published probably next week, you'll, you can turn to the CIP page and you can see that grant funding breakdown. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, we will now uh, go to action items, uh, Raina. Thank you. Um, we have minutes for our regular meeting of the Public Works Commission for March 9th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? A uh, motion to approve. Second. May I have a second? Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I get, I'm guessing everyone, is there anyone abstaining or is there anyone not approving? <laughs> okay, perfect. So motion passes unanimously three to zero. Good, city council liaison communication, Evelyn? Yes, um, I would like to recognize uh, Antony Tespai. Um, for being now a member of the board of the Upper San Gabriel Valley Water Municipal District. Congratulations, Anthony. And we should have um, funds coming our way, grant funds maybe. Um, but that, you know, congratulations for a well-deserved um, recognition. And, For the water part, I think. Um, my next comment is I would like to thank the public works staff um, of their excellent um, work on the 6 to 6 um, Golden Streets. And it was so organized. And uh, the comments that I got from the residents is they really like that um, pocket from um, Mission and um, Meridian through Fair Oaks. And they felt really safe um, bringing out their children. This is the biggest turnout of kids in the history of six to six, um, plus the attraction of the uh, jumpers. And Ted was there to fix the power when the power was out on the jumpers and the kids were just waiting for Ted to get it off. It was really kind of funny, but um, um, overall it was really well run. Um, and um, this year, the uh, kickoff at, um, I think, 8 o'clock uh, went to Alhambra. Last 
pre-COVID, we had a kickoff here in South Pass. So, um, and uh, members of the Congress and uh, local dignitaries were uh, actually um, here to um, participate in the uh, opening, which was really great. So thank you, um, Ted, for your leadership. Great. Commissioner Communications, anybody would like to say anything? I, I think I also want to thank Ted and Public Works for the eclectic that was uh, the day before the 66th, of which we uh, had anticipated maybe 6,000. I think we wound up between 10 and 12,000 folks that came out. So it was very well attended. Uh, three years ago, we had 18,000. Uh, we had 66 bands this year we had we cut it down to 65 uh, and only shut down Meridian between uh, Mission and El Centro uh, as well as it was uh, performed and addressed we're looking forward to doing it once again next year we hope the support not only of the city but the, uh, the, the community as well um, again we're looking forward to hopefully maybe the certain things that I noticed, areas that should have been closed off on mission was a concern of mine because the crowd was overwhelming uh, in certain areas. So they not only went onto the sidewalk, but they worked themselves out into the street. So for safety reason, I think it would be beneficial if we were to look at maybe the possibility of once again, closing down mission, uh, at least between Meridian and, and maybe Fremont or something like that. Um, and that, we, that was wonderful. So thank you all for that and the participation. I also want you to keep in mind that uh, come um, June, or excuse me, July 2nd, we were gonna have what we would be calling the We Are America. It'll be a play performed by Lisa and Jim Reynolds and they'll be using the high school auditorium. Uh, we're gonna limit it to about 700 folks. It'll be publicized and it's gonna be free of cost um, so that we will try to get everyone out there uh, to at least and keep everyone in town so that we will have our 4th of July Festival of Balloons down Mission Street. Once again, this year, we'll be uh, performing that. and. We'll have, as, as in the past, we'll have uh, everyone participating and walking down and, and, uh, and then winding up over at Garfield, getting ready for the evening over at the high school with the fireworks. Uh, morning of, we will naturally have our pancake breakfast at the fire department. So please, please, please stay in town and enjoy that. Uh, we, we look forward to doing that again, too. Quiet after that. Um, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, social June chairman. June 25th, we will have the South Pasadena Tournament Roses Golf Tournament uh, being held. And we only because we were able to complete the golf course in time, not only for SPEF that's coming up, but uh, we will have the uh, golf tournament. Um, being held by the uh, SPTOR South Pass in the tournament. Um, and I think that completes everything that I wanted to promote. So there you are. Frank, you have to say something. <laughs> I, I seconded the approval of the minutes. That, that's all I had to say today. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Frank. Evelyn, wonderful. Let's uh, uh, go off to uh, Staff Liaison Communications. Um, I just want to thank you for um, all the glowing comments for the public works staff. I know um, I saw a few of you there, but we had a whole uh, team working behind the scenes for weeks ahead of time, and even a team, you know, during the day in both events, you probably didn't see them, but they were they were taking care of a lot of stuff. They actually got the power working. I just was standing around. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, and we'll we'll take your uh, comments in consideration too as we do like a lessons learned for both events and and move forward for next year. So. Yeah, thank you very much for those comments on behalf of all of our staff members that work so hard for that. Um, 
as far as communications go, I don't have much to say and I won't take up more of your time. So we could probably move right into the next item, which is the, the um, upcoming events. And so I, I do have some, a couple of things to say about this. Um, if you haven't heard already, um, and there were some questions about this early in the year, how are we going to um, handle you know, commissioner recognition, talking about what commissioners have accomplished and what's on the plan for next year? Um, we, we are in the process of organizing a commissioner Congress event, and that will, is scheduled for June 22nd. It's a Wednesday night, the uh, um, week after the council meeting, if I'm doing my math right here. Yes. Um, and so the idea is that that will, um, it will actually be a public meeting because it will be all council members and, and whatever commissioners can attend. Um, and the idea, the idea is to recognize commission's achievements over the year. Um, so uh, it'll be a dinner. Um, public will be admitted to attend. I don't think they'll be fed, but the commissioners and the council members will be. Uh, it's expected to be at the War Memorial um, in the evening on that Wednesday night. Um, so if you can join us, that would be fantastic. Um, we should uh, at some point establish who might be able to come because the expectation would be that um, a representative from the commissioner, commission, preferably the chair or the vice chair or so on, um, would do a very, very brief uh, uh, review of the annual um, report accomplishments. And it would just be a very, very short thing because there's a lot of commissions to go through that evening. So um, we, we've, we've been working on this uh, quite a bit this year. Um, but I know we had postponed, we might have postponed finalizing that report because there was the commissioner evaluation and we didn't know what was going to happen with commissions merging and things like that. So we'll get back to you as staff to prepare um, for that and what will be presented. But that's the idea. So um, Braino and ourselves will reach out to you to organize who can, who can attend on behalf of the commission. Perfect. Terrific. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank Ted. you. And with that said, I think. Um, we are adjourned. Uh, thank you very much. And we will get back to you on July 13th, 2022 at 630. And hopefully we can have an in-person event as well. Thank you and so long.